Hey guys, welcome back, Ricky here. All right, so we have one last sharpening video here on the Shapton Glass 120. And to finish it off, I'm using the Gihai uh, Hap 40 steel knife here. Uh, this guy is an absolutely beautiful knife. I've been using it for now for about a month and it's been holding up really, really nicely. It's still very, very sharp. I can see why so many folks love Hap, um, Hap 40 steel because it is still sharp. I'm not gonna run my finger up and down my the knife as you guys see me on my other videos with some of the other knives that dull after about a month of use. Um, but this guy here is still fairly sharp. It's very clean. Um, I've been using my rust erasers on it um, about once a week. And also um, I've been using a, a sodium uh, bicarbonate uh, to actually clean the patinas that develop uh, on the knife. I personally don't love patinas and so I actually try to do uh, my best to keep them, uh, my knives clean. And so even though it's been used for about a month, it does look fairly new. You guys can see there is a patina that's just um, developing there naturally that is pretty deep into the metal. And unless I throw some really fine uh, sandpaper on it or uh, steel wool, it won't remove all of the patina. Okay, but overall, really nice knife. Um, this here is uh, from Mark Richmond, really great guy uh, from uh, Chef Knives to Go. This is just a really beautiful knife. Yeah, as you guys can see here, uh, the semi-custom handle just makes a really big difference in terms of how the knife looks and feels. But uh, this isn't a knife review. I just want to kind of, I guess, brag a little bit about the knife. But uh, overall, the profile is really beautiful. It's got this nice, uh, you know, gentle curve here with a very, very slight flat uh, quarter of the knife. And just the distal taper on this thing is just razor thin um, when it gets towards the tip here. So really interesting knife to use in the kitchen. I really enjoy it. Um, this knife is still sharp, okay, so I don't want to, uh, again, I'll, I'll do a really quick cut test to show you guys how sharp it has been after even about a month of use. Um, the Half 40 steel is pretty incredible in terms of how well they hold their, their edge. And let me grab some newspaper here. Alright, so my notorious newspaper, okay, so it's a little damp because it's been raining here in Los Angeles. Uh, so I'm going to do just a quick cut. So you guys can see, it still cuts pretty well. You guys can hear it. It's it's got a nice clean, really clean cut there. Okay, so throw that aside. Uh, I'm still gonna run the the knife on the brick 20 times, even though it doesn't need it, uh, because uh, th again, this is not the the st the stone that I normally would start off. But because I'm doing a review of the stone, I, I want to see how it reacts to a steel that is at the heat treated to 65 to 66. All right, so we're gonna start on the the brick, again, 20 times on my trusty brick. And uh, I know you guys are probably cringing, and I am as well, because <laughs> this is a really nice knife, and the, uh, the edge is just so well maintained. It seems like a waste to just run it on a brick, but it's for you, my friends and my subscribers. I don't know how many that is, but I think it's about probably 15 at this point. We'll go five more. Okay. Let's see. Let's take a look at the edge now. Okay, so it's slightly more dull, but I can still feel it's it's sharp, um, sharper than most of the other knives have uh, have felt after the the brick run. But um, it's not going to cut me anymore, which is which is nice. I'm, not, I'm I'm actually quite cautious right now, really slowly moving my finger up and down the edge. Okay, so it's ready. So the brick did its job, and again, uh, normally this I think even after twenty. 20 poles this would probably still be relatively sharp but it's been used for about a month as well so just keep that in mind um okay so uh, this one has not been wet wet yet so we're gonna throw some water on the surface so it's been clean from my last last sharpening that's tight let's this guy down and um you know some folks have asked me how much wear does the brick um do um, I really don't know. I'm guessing the brick will artificially dull my knives by, I would say, at least four to five weeks. Um, I've used many knives in my kitchen. If you guys come to my house and use my knives, after even about a month of being sharpened, my knives are still fairly sharp, even though I use them every single day. And and, you know, and the brick running 20 times makes them completely dull. So I would say at least four to five weeks, maybe even closer to six to seven weeks of use, uh, of normal use on a kitchen uh, cutting block versus the brick. I can't really give you guys an exact uh, estimate, but I'm guessing anywhere between six and eight weeks. Let's just, you know, uh, let's just say around there. So um, I've had I've had a couple of comments that 
I am I shouldn't have used a 1200 um, Atoma lapping plate on this 120 grit stone because it makes it too smooth but here's the thing though uh, the reason I use I lapped it with a 400 and then the 1200 is because Shapton their diamond lapping plate is made to sh uh, flatten their 500 to a 30,000 grit stone okay so if they if their one diamond plate can go 500 to 30,000 I imagine it's at least a thousand or maybe two thousand grit of a mesh in terms of the diamond plate. So me lapping this plate with a twelve hundred grit atoma is really not that unusual. So what I'll do today is I'll do a couple of passes on uh, on the stone as it is, and this has been lapped with a twelve hundred atoma. Then I'll lap it with a one forty after a couple of passes and see if it re actually reacts differently than it was or then how it felt on the 1200 side and that's kind of confusing but um just trust me on that um yeah so anyways uh, i'm gonna sharpen this guy right now i'm gonna get it prepared first i've got my 1000 zero nagura there which i'll use to clean the stone with all right so we're now just gonna hop right into it uh do a, a couple of passes and see how this um knife feels on this stone Number one, and right off the bat, I can tell you that this knife feels like nothing else. Uh, I mean, it feels like it's not even being sharpened. So, <laughs> um, I can see there is some material coming off of the knife, but I can I can barely feel it when I'm actually sharpening. So, uh, yeah, the half forty steels are by far the hardest steels I have used in my kitchen. Pass number two, and again, I mean, the knife feels like it's barely being touched. It's um, it's really incredible how it feels right now. So I'm gonna try something different. Uh, I haven't done this on any other any other other videos, but I'm gonna take my Atoma 140, and I'm gonna do a few passes on this guy and see how it feels uh, being flattened with the 140 stone. dozen passes or so. Alright. Try off. Okay, so it does feel ever slightly rougher. Uh, it still feels pretty smooth though. I mean this is a very very fine 12 uh, 120 grit stone. So I'm gonna do a pass here and see how it feels. Do a better job cleaning the surface. Make sure we get all the grit off. All right. So that was pass number three, but pass number one in terms of uh, lapping it with a 140. And yes, actually surprisingly, it is a little bit faster. I'm um, not by much. It's probably, you know, I still am 
not there at the burr yet, and this is a really hard steel. So maybe on a regular steel where it's uh, you know anywhere between a 57 to a 62 on the Rockwell scale, um, this would actually make a pretty big difference. But right now on the, on something like this, not quite yet. So I'm gonna run it one more time. All right, so um, there is a micro burr from tip to dip at this point, um, which is actually quite nice. So the stone does benefit from being lapped with a diamond plate that is a similar grit. This is a 140 diamond plate that I've just used uh, the 140 side on. And again, this is being a 120 grit stone. So, um, you know, so actually lapping a stone with a similar grit, uh, if you're gonna flatten your stone, would be beneficial. So. I'm not quite sure why Shapton would sell you a diamond plate, a diamond lapping plate that can, you know, flatten a grit range from 500 to 30,000. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm actually quite curious uh, what their rating uh, for that uh, diamond plate is. I believe it's five micron. So uh, I don't know what that actually translates to. That's a little confusing. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna turn this stone around and I'm gonna sharpen the left side. So uh, I believe on the right side, that was actually four passes uh, in total. So even though it was two passes on the 1200 lapping side and then two passes on the 140 lapping side. So I know this is gonna be a little different from the other um, sharp sharpening videos of this stone. Um, so even though the results may sound different because uh, I'm using two different type of lapping stones on this guy right now, um, it should give me a fairly, a fairly good understanding of how fast this stone really is. All right, so we'll do the same thing here on the left-hand side. So this is what I suspected. I suspected after a few passes, that roughness that I initially felt with 140 would start going away, and it actually is. And it actually, this pass right now feels a little bit smoother than the first pass I felt with the 140 side. Okay, so, and again, this is a really hard steel, so that's, this steel has a lot to do with how the stone is reacting. Uh, this steel is pulling off a lot of that uh, imperfection or that... Um, Kind of the leftover from the 140 grit uh, from the from the Atoma, and it's starting to smooth it out. Now I, I can feel much of the stone, especially here in the center area. That's actually much. It's it is smoother than the the outer edges right now, and uh, yeah. So I mean, the you know, unless you're gonna repeatedly flatten your stone with the 140, it doesn't really make sense. I think if you do it once, it should give you a pretty consistent. Uh, performance, whether you're using 140 side or the 1200 side. Yeah, so now there's a, I think that was three passes. So now the knife has got a great micro burr on both sides. I'm just gonna clean it up right now. I'm uh, not on both sides, I'm on the right side. And I'm just gonna pull off any excess burr that I have. Now normally I wouldn't strop with this, with this stone, but because I'm not gonna be sharpening any other 
stones with this knife. I just want to just while I'm here, just want to pull off the edge, uh, clean the edge up a little bit, and let it get it prepared for uh, either next stone in a, in a little while, or let it go back in the kitchen for for a few days before I'm ready to sharpen it again. Pulled off all the burr, or most of the burr. Okay, so everything's on its end now. So the edge feels pretty clean. I mean, obviously you can feel that it is, it has been sharpened on a relatively coarse stone. It doesn't feel like a 1000 side at all. Uh, you can definitely feel that the the edge is you know, a little bit on the rough side. And But overall, it feels really nice for a 120 grit stone. And, you know, so uh, I guess to really quick recap, um, when I started this uh, sharpening, I had the 1200 side uh, I had the stone lapped with a 1200 grit uh, Atoma, which made it feel a little bit smooth uh, on this first, on the first two passes of this knife, as well as on all the other knives I've worked on. It did feel smooth. Then I did the 140 lapping side on on the 120, and it felt a little bit uh, rougher. It, def it definitely felt closer to a 120, but it probably felt more like a 400 grit, you know, 320 or 400 grit uh, ceramic stone. And then after I flipped it and I sharpened, I've, I you know, went a couple passes or three passes on the left side. It does feel smooth again. It doesn't quite feel as smooth as it was when it when I first started, when it was first lapped with the one or with the twelve hundred grit Atoma. But it does feel considerably smoother than it did when I first lapped it on the one forty side. So this is a very fine one twenty grit stone. That's not a bad thing. Okay, I just I just want to make that clear. Uh, just because it's a 120, uh, sometimes you know grit ratings can be a little bit deceiving or just a little bit um, uh, not grit ratings. You know, not all grit ratings are universal and equal. But overall, this has been a really nice stone. Um, it's fairly fast cutting. Uh, it doesn't load up too quickly. It actually picks up. It does pick up material, but um, that's nothing unusual from you know, ceramic stones. And um, so this uh, this is the last video f for this stone here. Um, so after this, we're gonna sharpen the Shapton 120, the blue stone. And then after that, we'll uh, we'll do the Atoma 140, and then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of all three stones. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I actually should do a really quick cut test on this knife, uh, just to show you guys that uh, even though the edge has been just uh, been you know sharpened or uh, prepped on the 120, or the, yeah, the 120, it can still probably cut. I think I think my sharpening skills are good enough. Let's try it really quickly here. I'm gonna dry this knife off. And I'll use the same piece of uh, newspaper I have laying next to me from the beginning of the video. So. Yeah, see it cuts. Look at that. That's on a 120 grit stone. Uh, the paper is wrinkled and damp but it, it's cutting fairly well. Look at that. Your host isn't so bad after all, huh? Okay, that's bad now. <laughs> that's really bad. Uh, let's get a slightly fresher piece. Okay, let's try to feather this guy here. Okay, so, I mean, that is as, as bad as an example as I can give you guys, but you guys can see it is cutting fairly well. I mean, look at that. I know how to sharpen a knife, can't I? Ha. Huh. Anyways, uh, that's it. So, um, yes, the knife actually does cut, and um, surprisingly. And so, you know, I mean, this is, again, this is not uh, an, an edge I would bring to the kitchen, but to show you guys, you actually can produce a relatively sharp edge with one stone. That's 120 grit. And so that's actually kind of sharpening to me. I didn't think that... Uh, that this knife would actually be this ready to cut, but uh, it's actually quite nice. So that's in part to do with the stone and the steel. I mean, this is a great steel, very easy steel to sharpen, even though it's rock hard. 
Uh, and this stone is really nice. It just gives you a really nice consistent edge from you know tip to tip. And uh, it's, uh, it's, you know, it feels a bit finer than a 120 grit, but that's just me. I will do a final analysis of the stone uh, at some point. And um, yeah, so that is it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next video.